this one is uh, dead simple, but easy to make uh, uh, mistakes on. And um, I, this is actually pretty much a direct run from the vignette. Uh, so just this is a way of kind of touching on the vignette for the building design and construction systems, which is a, is a couple different vignettes, but one of them has uh, a stair uh, design in it. So okay, uh, on this one, our uh, situation here is we have to figure out the number of risers. Uh, the stairwell goes from the uh, zero, zero elevation up to the eight foot 10 elevation where there's a door. And then it goes, continues up to the 13, six elevation uh, where there's another door. So our first consideration is gonna be from zero, zero up to eight foot 10. Uh, so we start thinking about, all right, we have a, a full run of uh, eight foot 10. Uh, that's gonna be the equivalent of, let's see, uh, eight times uh, 12 would be 96 plus uh, 10, so that's a vertical run of 106 inches. Uh, so our total vertical uh, uh, rise from the ground floor up to this level is 106 inches. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say, oh, that's 106 divided by seven. And why seven? Because in a public stair, and this is a library, so it's a public building, in a public stair, for accessibility reasons, the highest riser we are allowed is a seven inch riser. Uh, in, if we're in a single family house or in a mechanical space or some uh, various other specific situations, I can actually have a higher riser. Um, it depends on the municipality for single family houses. Uh, where I am, I can do it up to, I think, an eight inch riser. Some places actually can go up even a little higher. But in any public stair, seven inch is the maximum riser. So our first hope is that if we divide 106 by seven, we'll get a nice even number. As it turns out, um, we do that, and I believe we end up with 15.14. So that means we have 15.14 risers. Um, well, obviously there's a little problem there. You can't have 0.14 riser, uh, because if you do, it's like a little sliver of a riser, it's gonna be a trip hazard, people would fall all over the place, which clearly is a problem. So uh, what that means is we're gonna actually round up. You're always gonna round up to 16 risers in this case. And why are you rounding up? Because if we round down, that means that little bit extra um, uh, is actually gonna become, it's gonna make it so that each of those risers were you know, seven and a 16th or seven and an eighth. And we just said seven is the maximum riser height you can have in a public stair. So you have to round up. Um, that's a mistake that people make all the time because it sure seems like you should be able to go to 15 when you're so close to it on this scenario. So in this, this case, if we actually went back in and we divided 106 uh, by 16, uh, I forget the exact, but I believe it comes out to six and five eighths inches. So that means each riser uh, is, we have 16 risers at six and five eighths each. Yeah, 6.625, uh, six and five eighths. Um, so uh, that gives you a kind of a, a clear sense. We have 16 risers for that first part. They're each six, uh, six and five eighths inches. Now we have to think about this second run of stairs. So we have a second run. We have 13, six. Uh, that's gonna be equivalent to, let's see, what is it? 156 uh, plus six, which is gonna be 162 inches. Uh, total from the zero up to the landing, but we don't care about that whole thing. We only care from the 810 up to that. So we take the 162 and we subtract, uh, what was the number, 106, uh, and that's gonna be equal to 56 vertical inches from landing one up to landing two. We divide 56 by seven on the hopes that it's gonna work out nice and ev evenly, and we get eight, and sure enough it does. So in this situation, we're gonna have eight risers at seven inches each. So in total, we have 16 plus eight, we got 24 risers. So A is the correct answer. Uh, intriguingly, some people get sort of screwed up by the fact that there are different riser heights on the two runs of stairs. Um, that's just the nature of the fact that the heights are set by some other reason. Like there's a, there's, there's a reason why we're coming to this height and there's a reason why we're coming to that height. Uh, there's, in this case, there's no way we could have them all be matching risers. But it is important that the risers are all the same from here all the way up to there and then a different same but all the same from there all the way up to there. 
Uh, you can't have a riser height change in mid-flight. Um, you shouldn't, even if you have a, a mid-landing, there's no reason why uh, one, set, one flight up to the landing should be different than the other flight. Um, the reason that this one it does is because there's a door at that landing. That landing is a set location. It's not just halfway between uh, the, the two floors you're trying to get to. So the answer is 24, 16 plus 8, but uh, kind of realizing that there's this very simple thing. You start by dividing it by, by 7 just uh, to see you get the ballpark, then you round up. Uh, if you have to, um, which most of the time you will have to, it's pretty rare that you end up with a nice even number. Uh, and then you go back and divide it by uh, whatever that number is again, and now you actually have both the number of risers and the riser height very simply. Uh, I've made it look kind of complicated here. Uh, you start to be able to do this in your sleep if you haven't already uh, been able to do it. Okay, I think uh, everybody got this right here. Uh, Rich asked a question. Yep. Uh, technically, riser height from zero uh, zero foot zero to the first landing can be different than from first landing up to eight foot ten, right? Um, I, so that's actually a little bit of a complicated question, even though it seems simple. Um, technically, that could be true, but pretty much any code official that if you if there wasn't a reason why that mid landing on that first run from zero up to the eight ten that the one ha part part way up. Um, if there wasn't a reason why it was placed where it was, uh, like there's a, a door or an access panel or there's some, some reason that would place that, then uh, most code officials would say, no, you gotta make them all the same. Because you're always trying to make them match as much as you possibly can. Now, if you're working in an older building, there's a lot more leeway because you know sometimes you're working with existing structure and you place a landing on something that already exists and then you're kind of doing your best in that scenario. Um, and so the code officials would be fairly flexible about that. But if you were building an all brand new stair in that scenario, there would be no reason to not make those the same riser height. And the code official would be just be like, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? You know, like you're just creating a problem for yourself. Um, but uh, the fact that there can be different, it's, it's, it's hard to answer because it would depend on all the other little pieces. In this scenario, I would say it should match. Okay, um, and then Dustin is asking, uh, what about the landing without the elevation? The riser height down, zero foot zero, could be different than a flight up to A10. I think that's the same. Yeah, it's essentially the same, same, question. same question. Um, and we could figure out what, uh, what that is. I, I didn't give you enough information to figure out uh, uh, how high that is uh, because I was trying to focus on the other issues. Um, but if you had uh, some, some uh, length of run issues and some other things like that, you could calculate what, what height that was fairly simply. And the last one here, Tim is asked, Timothy is asking, why not divide 162 inches by seven inches to get your 24 hour risers? Why did you do it in those two parts? Because, uh, that's, a, that's an important question actually, I'm glad you asked that. Um, and the reason for that is because if we did that, our, uh, as we got up uh, to the 810 height, the 810 was given to us, because uh, there's, a, there's a floor there, and as we got up to there, it wouldn't be equal. It wouldn't, the, the, the riser that was near there would not line up exactly with that floor plane. So we can't do it as a full run. Um, it's possible in this case, when you did that, I think what you're saying is just mathematically, uh, if we do it, we'll be reasonably close, but it's actually possible to get the wrong number uh, because you can be, uh, they can be very, very close from one to another. And uh, when you divide overall, you'd get a different, uh, uh, it would be one off. Okay. Um, one other quick thing to say about this, just uh, this is sort of obvious, but I, I, I teach a lot and I've had a lot of students and man, the number of times I've seen this is a silly mistake. I, so it's just worth saying. Um, if you imagine that you have stairs and they're going up, let's say in this little case I have uh, one, two, three risers. Um, I have three risers, but I have one, oops, um, I have one and two treads. People will make this mistake all the time. Uh, where they'll say, okay, there's uh, you know, X number of risers uh, and they're at this height and the treads are at this, how long of a run of stairs is this? And people will multiply the number of risers times the tread width, forgetting to subtract one of them. Um, so that's just a little side point uh, to think about. Mm -hmm.